Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about the third final stand map called Hangar 21. Now this map is really cool, it's designed well, it's at night time and the map isn't too big but it's not too small either. There's a nice balance between vehicle and infantry combat and visually the map is beautiful. If you're at the Russian spawn you can really pick up some speed on the snowmobiles and maybe do a few crazy stunts along the way just like how I did now. Somehow I managed to do a forward flip, but you do need to be careful as if you go over a massive jump, as soon as you hit the ground you'll get killed in action like you're going to see very soon. And also a few side things, the drop pods are now back from Battlefield 2142, but be careful if you try to land while inside, there's a strong chance you'll die, so make sure to bail out before it lands, and also try to give yourself enough time to parachute or else this happens. But anyway, let's talk about the map layout. As we can see here, we have the US spawn right below me. Then as I move along, we can see the F flag on my right, which is not too far away from the US spawn. Then we have a watchtower, which is the D flag. Then to the right, we can see the E flag followed by the C flag soon after. Now, if you take a look to my left, you can see the Russian spawn. It's located on top of a slope. Then we have something really cool. The A and B flags are inside of this giant hangar which has possibly an early model of the giant titan ships in Battlefield 2142. This is where you can activate the Levolution as well. You can turn on the titan's rockets that produce a giant fireball that spreads throughout the lower level. As we can see, the A flag is on the top level while the B flag is at the entrance level. So overall, the map plays out really nicely and so far I think this is going to be one of my all-time favourite maps in Battlefield 4. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Throughout this video I'm using the Scar H with the Heavy Barrel which in retail BF4 I wouldn't normally use. In CTE the Heavy Barrel only adds 30% more recoil which makes it a more of a viable option. I'm also using the 44 Magnum without any trigger delay. It feels so much more better without it. As for vehicles, there's no tanks or LAVs, but there's still jets and attack helicopters. We also have a transport heli and a few jeeps and snowmobiles. Like I said before, it's a good mix between infantry and vehicle combat. Even though most of the map is fairly open, you don't really need to worry too much about vehicles. Though being a nighttime map, I felt like the attack heli can easily see your position, which I'm assuming is being given away from the muzzle flash and the trail of your bullets. So if you're playing inventory, I would probably turn my laser sight off and go with the flash hider barrel attachment, or maybe a silencer, which I didn't actually do in this gameplay as I wanted to try out the heavy barrel. Now the only bad sides to this map are the sniping camping spots, especially on top of the hangar. As you can see here, you have a very clear view of pretty much every part of the map, so this spot is really appealing to the recons that just love to stay in one spot for the entire game. I'm really happy we finally have gotten a nighttime map. It's actually really refreshing and gives the environment a nice feel to it. Also, if you look up into the sky, you'll see a giant moon. It's very aesthetically pleasing to see the moonlight shine through the clouds and onto the map. Anyway guys, I'm just going to let you enjoy the gameplay. This map is amazing and I'm sure you'll agree with me once Final Stand is here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
Go get it! 